Uh, True Valis Dona says, hello, well-respected Mr. Force. If you ever decide to become a painter, this should be your baseline. Also, Willie LMA, we didn't link anything. Artwork created by the mentally imbalanced hold a particular fascination to people because they provide a... Disturbing art made by mentally ill people. I mean, I feel like every really successful artist was a little bit mentally ill. Unique insights into an unseen world. They help us to understand how people with mental disorders experience the world around them. These artworks are often highly disturbing, conveying the full horror. Dude, like, if you didn't put this... Play this in... game, you doffers. It is your chance to hold a speedrun world record. The fucking no, I did play a lot of those games. Because Not those specific ones that look like like uh, Geometry Dash or whatever the fuck it's called. But um, I do play a lot of zero purchases, zero review in the games. In the games, world. yeah. They help us to understand how people with mental disorders experience the world around them. These artworks are often. If you weren't, if you didn't have this music and you would say this is a Picasso drawing, this would not be creepy at all, and I wouldn't think anything about it. Highly disturbing, conveying the full horror of their madness far better than disturbing. any psychologist can. This I've is not disturbing. All artists whose work shows the nightmarish disturbance of their own minds. Richard Dad was a Victorian era painter, born in England in 1817. A lot of his work focuses on fairies, pixies, and other folklore subjects, as well as oriental scenes inspired by his travels. The sheer amount of detail in his paintings show an obsessive mind, one that focuses on minuscule details to a compulsive degree. During a trip to Egypt in 1842, Richard Dad's personality began to change drastically. He began to believe that his mind was being controlled by the Egyptian god Osiris and became violent and delusional. Believing he was suffering from sunstroke, he returned to England and was taken in by his family in an attempt to recuperate him. His condition worsened during this period. He became convinced that his father was actually the devil in disguise and one day during the walk in the countryside, he pounced on his father from behind, slashing his throat with a razor blade and stabbing him with a dagger. His father died from his wounds and Richard fled to France, still wearing his blood-stained clothes. Apparently, police investigating the murder found a sketchbook full of portraits by Richard Dad of his friends and family, each one with their throats slashed. In France, Richard was riding a stagecoach. He pulled out a razor and attempted to slash the throat of a random passenger, still thinking that the devil was pursuing him. He was captured by the authorities and they certified him to be criminally insane. He would spend the rest of his life in a mental asylum but continued to paint throughout his incarceration. These paintings would Slice be them up because his <laughs> finest work. The most famous of these paintings is titled The Fairy Fella's Masterstroke. He worked on his painting for nine years and never actually finished it. A lot of details in the painting show Richard's mental state. The flattened perspective suggests a schizophrenic mind which attaches equal significance to mundane events as they would to important events. A chaotic world is sorted and levelled. The accidental arrangements of nature are organised and obsessed over. This shows a mind that attempts to see logical patterns in random noise. A flat landscape is crisscrossed with black lines and swirling shapes. A visual representation of his intersecting and jumbled thoughts. His inner turmoil manifesting as blades of grass I mean, and the vines of plants. Eyes peer out from the locations, reflecting the imagined persecutions of his paranoid delusion. Some of the figures are disturbing. I find these two characters particularly interesting. One figure appears to be grabbing the other from behind. The figure in front is clutching at their throat. The memory of the murder of his father has been rendered as fantasy. In fact, almost every figure in the painting seems to have another figure behind them, ready to pounce. 
In the centre of the scene is a distressed looking little man, the chaos radiating out on all sides of him. Ten the blank stare and strange speaking. eyes of this man can be seen in many other of his <laughs> paintings. This one is titled Agony, Raving Madness. The face could very well be a self-portrait. The eyes and face of the lunatic in the painting bearing a striking resemblance to the artist himself. Another painting in the series shows the same man with a bloody oh man, he really looks like someone. Corpse, artist himself. I'm thinking of an actor, but I can't recall who. Another painting. I think it looks like that. I think it looks like that guy. Uh, I think he's British. Like in a lot of parodies. Uh, he's a comedian, I think. Uh, not Kevin Spacey. Ricky Gervais, I think that's him. Hang on. I need to double check to make sure. I think that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's him, it's him, it's him. You know it, you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's him, that's him. I don't know how the fuck his last name is pronounced. I just thought it was Gervais. What is it? I don't know. In the series shows the same man with a bloodied sword standing over the corpse. Right, a scene right, right. which Richard Dad painted numerous times. It seems that he dealt with the memory of his crimes. America is the only country that pronounces the fucking gene Perhaps that this way. figure is a self-portrait. The artist realizing that no matter how hard he tries to escape into a fantasy world, the reality of a situation still surrounds him. In 1995, artist William Uta Morgan was diagnosed right, with English. Alzheimer's disease. Uh, he began a series of self-portraits in order to document his mental ruin as the disease slowly destroyed his mind. Over the course of five years, William painted or drew pictures of himself looking in the mirror. They show a slow depersonalization as the artist becomes unable to recognize his own face. The paintings change from accomplished portraits to abstract shapes that vaguely resemble a human head. The dementia turning the world around him into a frightening blur of unidentifiable shadowy figures. The final portrait is the most haunting. The tiny frightened eyes like that of a rodent. Oh, I thought it was the fucking pig nose. Of skin. One jowl hanging down to the side. His bulbous misshapen cranium seems to be weighing him down. A useless dead weight hanging heavy on his neck. The dark line across his face, whether intentional or not, shows a head cracking under the pressure, a fragmenting mind, like an egg being smashed open. When compared to this 1967 portrait, it provides a chilling insight into the devastation wrought on the brain by Alzheimer's disease. Lewis Wayne was a freelance artist who specialized in drawing anthropomorphized figures of cats. In 1924, after his behaviour became increasingly strange and violent, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and committed to a mental asylum. He continued to draw cats in the asylum, but his drawings began to change drastically. Instead of friendly and happy looking cats, their expressions became sinister. Now they were being drawn looking hostile right out at the viewer. More and more, the focal point of the painting became the eyes, a common theme among artists with paranoid disorders. Instead of the realistic settings, the backgrounds became abstract geometric patterns. Slowly the cats began to merge with the backgrounds. Now there was no distinction between the wallpaper and the subject in front of it. The cats themselves became increasingly disjointed and unusual. The patterns eventually growing so complex... This is a fucking pog champ of the day. What the fuck is this even? Even in these abstract images, central to all these pictures is the eyes, always staring out, menacing the viewer. Even when looking at a bunch of random shapes, you're still left with a feeling that you are being watched. Perhaps this was Wayne's attempt to convey the nature of the paranoid mind, to find patterns in everyday events and to come to the conclusion that you are being watched with hostility by everyone around you. Ironically, it is thought that Wayne's mental disorder was actually brought on by his love of cats, as a parasite in cat feces may have been the cause of his schizophrenia. In rats, this parasite causes a suicidal what? attraction in to rats? cats, what? making them very easy to catch. They're parasites in cat love feces. For cats turned into a disturbing feces. obsession once the par 
disgusting. Wait, they still get that? Can people still get that today or what? What's really changed? Or do you get vaccines for your cats against that? Ugh. Super common? Oh, come on, man. It's not super common. What? You get fucking... Ugh. Dead. It... So what? If you're a crazy cat lady, it's because you're getting pa fucking parasites from the poo poo or what? 200k people a year. Wait, what the fuck are you talking? Wait, toxoplasmosis? 50% of the world population have it. Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? You're saying that 50% of the world population have this, um... Wait, what was it? Was it a par- it was a parasite. What? Um, but it's- it must be harmless, right? Toxoplasmosis. What is this? Toxoplasmosis uh, is a disease that results from the infection with the Toxoplasma gondii parasite, one of the world's most common parasites. Infection usually occurs by eating undercooked contaminated meat, exposure from infected cat feces, or mother to child transmission during pregnancy. The fuck does it do then? Wait, so 50% of you motherfuckers have this shit. Probably fucking 80% if you have a fucking cat. Yeah. Enjoy, cat people. I warned you about this. I warned you. Multiple times. <laughs> I have dogs. Me too. Didn't say dogs, but it probably is in dogs too. I mean, we don't really have the issue with the parasites from meat in Sweden. Uh, we're, we're pretty strict about anything food related when it comes to um, conditions like temperature and expiration dates and all that stuff we're better safe than sorry over here like the shit that expires here in Sweden you could probably eat for like another fucking month probably <laughs> or other countries would like have a month longer expiration date or something uh, but I don't see what what the fuck if 50% of the people have it then it's fine Latent. Due to absence of obvious symptoms, hosts easily become infected with T. gondii and develop toxoplasmosis without knowing it. Although mild flu like symptoms occasionally occur during the first few weeks. I don't want to read about this man much. I don't have it. 100%. Parasite took hold of his mind. I don't have it. The I'm fine. The artwork is not by a professional artist, but by a child. When the dog probably carries the plague or something. The Warsaw home for mentally disturbed children in 1948. He asked various children to draw home on the blackboard. What then he took plague. their photograph. Little is known about Teresa except that she grew up in a concentration camp and the things she experienced there destroyed her fragile mind. When David asked her to draw home, this is what she produced. The front Maybe she's drawing like the way there. Magic lines can be interpreted in many ways. <laughs> maybe coils of barbed wire, maybe plumes of smoke rising from a ruined building, 
maybe entrails spilling from a corpse. Perhaps her mind is so shattered by horrific memories that any attempt to recall the past causes her to scrawl these incoherent shapes. There are two photographs that show her drawing at different times. The later image shows that she may have been trying to draw some recognisable shapes, but this is lost in the swirling turmoil. In both photographs, her face tells us more about her mental state. Her Maybe she's just really bad at drawing. Her eyes bear the and, expression and of a person whose mind has been wrecked forever by extreme psychological trauma. There are many more artists who suffered from mental disorders. In fact, there has been a direct link between creativity and mental illness. That's what I said. Maybe all the best artists were insane. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. Thank you for watching.